Lucky you. 36 Turn pistols and golf. Alternate Shots Podcast. Barney's Army. Where we talk about golf. Sandy. Poker. James Bond. Horse racing. Double. Classic movies. Zenyatta. We have no script. Down the stretch they come. We are glad you joined us. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> All right, Billy. Uh, let's shift to Dobes talking about some pre Ryder Cup chatter here. Uh, there were six automatic qualifiers, and I'll come back to that. And there are six captain's picks. I heard somebody say the other day that they'd rather have eight automatic picks and four captain's picks. It's less pressure on the captain. We can talk about that as we go through here. But these automatic qualifiers came off the um, the rankings and what's interesting, before the BMW Championship, Brooks Kepka, who's on this team, thank goodness, he was fifth in the top six two yep. weeks ago. What happened there, uh, Patrick Cantley made a putt on 17 and a putt on 18, the 71st and 72nd hole, effectively bumping Brooks Kepka out of the top six. He moved to seventh. Right. He so, became, uh, he, he became uh, it was up to Zach Johnson to put him back in. Right. And so you can see the team on the right. Those are all the players. It's no surprise now. The press announcement was yesterday. I don't know where we go here, but I, I guess what we ought to do is talk about those six picks. And to me, Kepka was a no-brainer. And Morikawa is just a great player. And they both won majors, multiple majors. What about these other four guys? Ricky, Justin Thomas, Sam Burns, and Spieth. See, I think you know, the Ryder Cup, to me, is uh, has got a lot to do with how guys play together. I think that's going to be an important factor more than, you know, the pressure of stroke play is one thing. The pressure of letting down a teammate is another thing. You know, some guys are better at match play. Uh, you know, some of these guys, you know, might have a blow-up hole. Like Spieth is a perfect example. He could shoot a 62 and an 82. You know, you just never know what he's going to do. But in match play, he can make a 12-on-1 hole and, you know, three birdies in a row right after that. So he's a great match play player. That and and I think adding Justin Thomas probably to play with Spieth because they've done it so well so often, you know, was a tough call. Is it Spieth? Ryder Cup he's played in five Ryder Cups. His win, uh loss and tie is eight, seven, and three. So he's almost fifty fifty on the wins and losses. Yeah. I don't have the breakdown in a uh, team. So the team is best ball like we play on Saturdays at the club, right? The other one is uh, uh, foursomes where you do alternate shot. But those are team competitions. They'll play, I think, two of each of those on first two days. Sunday, it's all matches. It's all singles. So you have 12 on each team. You got 12 singles. So you got 28 points, 16 are team events, and 12 are singles. And how many of these guys are rookies? This is Wyndham Parks for Brian yeah. Harmon's first, right? Three of the first six made it on the team. Well, Clark won the U.S. Open, right, at the uh -huh. – in, in Los Angeles, L.A. Country Club. Brian Harmon won at Hoylake uh, by six strokes, and he beat everybody. And all so, those Ryder Cuppers uh, that will be on the team played in that Open. So he's got that little chip on his shoulder. Think, and Max Homa, Brian, Brian, Brian Harmon is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this Ryder Cup. That's my prediction. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think if I'm Zach Johnson, I don't know how you manage these guys. It's 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 that's something I have no idea about. But I'm going to leave Brian Harmon alone because he and his caddy went out and handled that pressure of the Open Championship. He's the he's the player of the year. He's got grit. He's got grit, and and he dealt with his own demons, and guess what? Every one of these guys is a demon. Right now, Scotty Scheffler's demon is a two-and-a-half-foot putt. He can fix that. He's got four weeks to spend an hour a day in the putting green and perfect his two-foot putt, his five-foot putt, right? And it'll be a different mindset, again, as a team player versus, you know, it's a different kind of weight on his shoulders, I would imagine, as a team player rather than, you know, only have to answer to himself if he fails. Otherwise, so I think it'll both relieve some pressure, it'll add different kind of pressure, but it'll relieve some of the pressure on him. Right. I, I, I think, think there's a reason these two guys are in the picture, uh, Spieth and Scheffler, even though this is only Scheffler's second, uh, Spieth's fifth 
uh, Ryder Cup. They're going to be the they're going to be the player coaches on this team effectively. I don't see Cantley as being the the winning the lock. You know, maybe he's a funny guy when you know him. I don't see home home as a social animal, but he just doesn't have any opens or majors or even the players championship he's just a good player and he's playing really good the last 18 to 24 months right yes and he'll probably lift the spirits of the team the whole time he seems to be very you know gregarious kind of guy very mm -hmm. likable i'm sure these guys all like him and plus he can play <laughs> i can play golf all these guys can play golf well, you got, I, I don't know what the relationship with Kepka is anymore with them, but I think the players. I think it's are good. I think it's good. I think there are, a lot of these guys are in Jupiter. Uh, I didn't know Cantley's in Jupiter. Uh, uh, Spieth is in Texas. Fowler's Kepka, in Jupiter. Fowler, Justin Thomas lives down the street from here. But I think I think there's enough synergies between. There's no like outlier. Maybe. Maybe Wyndham Clark's going to be brought in, and and Zach will put his arms around him and make sure everybody makes him feel good. I I think he can play by himself. He was by himself. He was our Scotland, if you will. He came out and won the Open in L.A., and he beat Rory McIlroy, who came in second. So, you know, there's some storylines here. Rory McIlroy got beaten by a few guys here that are on this team that he's going to want to avenge, and so is Victor Hovland either. Hovland lost the, if you will, Hovland was playing Colin Marikawa, in the 2021 and they have their match which is the deciding point for the 2021 Ryder Cup now that was a landslide but that match you know you Colin Marikawa has that he got that point and everybody who poos that but you do remember that the rest of your life how would you pair who who do you think pairs I mean Spieth and Thomas is probably going to be paired together I think you gonna pair those two guys, Shofley, Shofley and Cantley are are like they're the rock of Gibraltar, if you will. They're really solid. Shofley and Cantley, I think their record is 3-0 and together or something like that last time they played. So How that's, about Scheffler and Kepka? Yeah. You got to play Kepka four out of the five matches. Uh, you know, I think Sam Burns may not see four or five matches. Um, i play Brian Harmon as much as he says he wants to play. If who, would, who would be a good pair, pairing with Brian Harmon? Morikawa? Maybe well, even Kepka. Maybe, maybe a Kepka, yeah. Two gritty guys. It, that's, to me, the fun part of this. Once, you know, we're beyond the, gee whiz, I'm really upset that uh, Cam Young didn't make it. And he. If you're, not, if you're not the guy that got in there automatically, you have, you know, you have to rely on the on the captain's picks and you know that that's the cat on the captain's shoulders and if i mean i guess freddie couples has got to eat a little crow he told everybody cam young is on the team a month ago and guess what there's only room for a certain number of players on the team and the captain has to live with his choices well the so other thing that's a curveball this year is you had two kind of um long shots that won two of the four majors you had Wyndham clark win the open and brian Harmon with the open championship right and that they played that, their way on. They played their way on and they deserve to be on there. My takeaway here beyond the team now, we've got a team. Let's move on. We've got a team. We're not going to cry in our milk here. I'd ask you if you look back the middle of October and you look back and analyze the the Rome Ryder Cup, which is going to be beautiful. I just don't yeah. I don't know. I've never been to Rome. Have you been to Rome? When I was in uh ninth grade. You still have I some, remember of, some of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you see the Coliseum, you see the Vatican. These are yep. going to be scenes of this Ryder Cup that you're not seeing at Whistling Straits. I'm sorry, you're not going to see no. at no. the Beth Page. You know, okay, the Beth no, Page gonna picture, get, like, you, picture you, of the Verrazano Bridge. Okay, no, good luck. The only time you see scenes like this is in like Spartacus. Yeah, I mean, this so. is this is borderline romantic. I'm, I mean, I'm getting a little romantic here, but no, I, I, I hear what you're saying because it. it it's really interesting. It's it's hard to even think that there is a golf course in Rome. The setting right. scene, these people that built that uh, that Ryder Cup venue, the parents, and they restored the, the castle first and then the golf course. Um, what do you think in the middle of October, two weeks after this is over, is going to be the reason the Ryder Cup is won by the U.S. team? That's a tough one because, it's you know, I, I, I really hope the U.S. wins, but they have a. This is a big uh, ladder to climb. I mean, 
the way Hovland's playing, it's like he's un- he's unbelievable lately. I think you can give Hovland three points. I'm sorry, four points because he's going to play in five matches. If yeah. I'm uh, Luke Donald, I'm putting Hovland. He's going to be my Archangelo. Yeah, and, and, he's got, and he's got and he's got John Rom. You know, I mean, there's some tough guys. McElroy, Rom, and and Hovland. Yeah, just give them their three singles points, right? Yeah, now they only need to win twelve more points to win the Ryder Cup if it's close. They're each going to win some of these matches, so I'm yeah. going to say each of those guys are going to win three points each if they're not paired together. Maybe yeah. so the, the U.S. I, need, the U.S. needs to see the best of of uh, Jordan Spieth. They need Justin Thomas to wake up, which I think he might. They need Kepka to be Kepka. They need Scheffler to be Scheffler, and and then and then I think the dark horse, like I keep saying, is Brian Harmon is going to be, I think, a thorn in the European side the whole way through. Hopefully, he gets a lot of playing time because I think he's just the he's got just the right personality for this, especially coming from a we must win kind of position. See, Justin Thomas is above the radar. They're going to be so much press. Oh he's yeah, going, that'll be all over. He's already out there putting his hand up, and so he's bringing right. it on. And these fans are brutal. I put some pictures up of the T there's 5,000 people behind the first T and he's got to perform. He's got to break even in his matches. If he plays four times, he's got to win two and lose two at worst. If he goes one and three or zero and four, the other guy, the other guy to watch is Sam Burns. We don't, he is a dark horse. We don't know what he's going to do in this. I know he's won the junior Ryder cup, but does does that even factor in? There's almost no downside because the expectations, at least uh, media-wise, will not be on him. So he's got incentive as, a, as with almost no downside, and he's very steady and determined. So yeah, he could be trouble, and th- and there's going to be a lot of heckling going on there, which I think will ignite Brian Harmon and and some of these other guys, you know, to stick it right back at them. So. It should be an awesome Ryder Cup. Uh, there's one interesting dynamic that I, I'm sure everybody's adults, but Davis Love was so outspoken against the Live Tour. So it's uh, interesting to think as a, as an assistant captain, what kind of relationship he might have with Kepka. Well, they'll get along. They're all going to put. They'll get heads. along. Yeah. Heckling is going to be like breathing. I think a lot of heckling is good. They might get used to it. And there's a couple of these guys, in my opinion, who will inspire, like Brian Harmon, as I keep saying, heckle him, you know, it's like brushing back uh, Reggie Jackson. Right. You know, all you do, all you might do here is wake him up. And that's probably true with a bunch of these guys, although some of their personalities outwardly might not show that. But I got to believe Kepka would rise to the occasion. I got to believe Scheffler doesn't need much incentive to rise to the occasion. If Scheffler plays like Scheffler can play, if Kepka plays like Kepka can play, and if Brian Harmon plays like I think he's going to play, I think that's the backbone of their team. If I was Scheffler will be steady, Cantley will be steady, steady. Homa will throw in a couple of surprises, and Spieth and Thomas will be Spieth and Thomas. So, but this is a tough team beating Rom McElroy and the incredibly hot, uh, victorious Victor, 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 yeah. My gosh. All right. They want to go over and practice on the, the course uh, in Rome. But maybe on the way back, they invite about 20,000 knuckleheads in Phoenix. And they go play in front of them and say, we want you to heckle. Basketball teams practice in the noise, especially when they're going to go into some of these very hostile environments. Like Duke. Duke is a tough place because it's just heckling going on the whole time. Yeah, think like, about a football team, yeah. Yeah, and it's a small place, and you're close to the hecklers. Just like these guys are going to be right next to the hecklers. And, and it's golf, it's different because in basketball or football, baseball, the noise is constant. In golf, there's an expected period of silence at some point, and all it takes is one yahoo to scream out in the middle of somebody's backswing. So This whole country has embraced this one sporting event like it's the World Cup. And it's going to elevate golf in, in, in Italy big time. And they want it to look really well. So what do you think is going to be the reason why the U.S. team does not win? John Rahm. John Rahm, Victor Hovland. I'm, Rory is Rory. You know, <clears throat> Rory's putter lets him down sometimes. But if Rahm is focused, he's in, almost invincible on the golf course in the last few years. So 
he's going to be he's going to be i think the toughest the toughest battle and I don't know. Do you sacrifice somebody against him in the singles, or do you send Scheffler out against him or Kepka? I think it's going to swing on the guy over my shoulder here. I think this is a house of cards. If Rory McIlroy is lighting it up and he's stiffing wedges and hitting par fours with his driver and doing all kinds of things that very few people can do, that's going to make a cement fortress that's going to be unbeatable by the European team. Likewise, it's a house of cards if he plays poorly and he misses a lot of putts. Yeah, that's, that's true. Here in the picture, I think he's the key to Rebecca here. He's going to be, you know, I mean, he's just such a good player, but the pressure and these European guys are, are they know how to do it. I don't know how they can handle the pressure. The pressure, I'm looking at Zach Johnson's vice captain, Steve Stricker, Davis Love, Jim Furyk, Fred Couples, and Stuart Sink. All of those guys have to be calming influences. I mean, they're, they're Furyk, Stricker, Couples are. There's no fire. I mean, it, the fire burns in underneath, but their demeanor throughout their careers has just been steady, steady, calm, acceptable. You know, they accept their shots. They they recuperate. All three of those guys are going to have a, a great deal of influence, I think, on these young kids. And they, they probably all these guys look up to those guys. Yeah. And they're going to be responsible for their own little pod, those four captains and three right. of one majors. Okay. Uh, yep. Stricker hasn't won a major, but his winning percentage on the senior tour now is sick. When he shows up, he wins. So he's, a and, he, winner. and he's so well respected by everybody. If you look at uh, Stricker, he's in my conversation. These 24 guys that are there, I'd put Stricker in the 25 guys, and I'd start from the bottom who you wouldn't put the 10-footer for your life. Stricker's yep. going to get down to the last five, four, three guys there. I might yep. want Stricker to put the 10-footer before Rory. Maybe not before Rom. Maybe not before Scheffler. But Stricker... Well, I'll definitely. take him over Rory, too. Yeah, I mean, he's and, and so there, if somebody's having a little issues with their putter, maybe they go off and uh, go see uh, Coach Stricker. Well, let's look at that. Uh, of the of the players on the U.S. team, how would you rank them for the ten footers? What order are these twelve guys? Well, I don't know anything about the last um, Sam um, Burns. How uh, I my issue with Cantley is I don't think he makes enough ten footers because he strikes the ball better than anybody, and I yeah. think that's why he's good in the team's event. Um, Cantley. Um, would be middle, um, Spieth, you know, on these kinds of things, Spieth makes these putts. Yep. I think Spieth, Kepka, and Brian Harmon are going to be the oh, top three 10 footers. I would have Kepka put a 10 footer for me in his life. Yeah. If his life was on it and mine, because if it's just my life, he could be fooling around. Yeah. He's going <laughs> to close his eyes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's going to be a beautiful venue. I hope the weather's awesome. I hope the fans have a lot of good time. I hope they have a lot of camera angles. This um, family that's putting up the venue, Rome in the background. Yeah, and we're going to get a tour, a drone tour of Rome constantly, which will be great. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be really, really cool and memorable. It may make me want to go to Rome now. All right. So hopefully, hopefully when they're finished, they won't want to go down in the catacombs and hide for a month, you know? Right. This, this, they got the. I don't think you cool grappa, but the grappa is sitting around somewhere. You know? <laughs> I think grappa, the uh, the uh, host committee's got the grappa waiting in some dark root cell. Yeah, and yeah, they also have big bowls of pasta and meatballs in the lunchroom. And hey, go on, munch it, enjoy yeah. yourself. <laughs> well, maybe maybe I'll put up a picture of the castle because there's a, a castle I think goes back to 1040. AD, maybe in there is a couple root cellars for the, the house wine of Marco. Yeah. Simone. Marco Simone is the name of the course. Marco Simone, what a great name. Right. Too. Thanks for joining Billy us Casper, today. Billy Horner. We really appreciate your Double feedback. Indemnity. And please Marky. subscribe to the Two show Adder. and hit Claude the bell Harman. icon so you get notified Movie classics. of new episodes. Mark Gable. Hit them hard job. and hit them off. That's 36 holes. 